the icons of real estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from eXp's top producing icon agents? If you are an ambitious eXp agent ready to skyrocket your business, this podcast is for you. Tune in every week with your host, Tomash Fonseca, and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your eXp business from $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Hello, guys, and welcome to another episode of Icons of Real Estate Podcast. With us today, we have Stacy and Jim Lambright, co-founders and owners of the Lambright team, which has been in real estate industry since 97 and has helped thousands of families turn their dreams into reality. Their team have earned city, state, and national awards in the, you know, all their sales achievements, skill negotiations, and customer service ratings. The Lambright is, of course, in the top 1% of real estate agents in production in Central Ohio, and of course, as well, icons of real estate. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Hey, Tomas, welcome to the Virgin Islands, man. <laughs> well, oh, yes. Uh, we're down here for a couple of weeks, right? Uh, our mobile real estate business. <laughs> I don't see any any better life than that. I always I, I always left on there. Yeah, it's great. You know, we flew out of Ohio. I think it was nine degrees when we yeah. flew out. And uh, but our uh, our team is there working back in Ohio, uh, making money. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you look very beautifully tanned. The both of you. <laughs> but we still have another week to go, so we'll probably be fried. We'll probably have tomato faces by the time we leave. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so tell us about uh, your real estate journey that has brought you, I guess, like uh, remote working in this, in this beautiful environment that you have back there. So we started in 97 and we were actually in the new build industry for nine years. And then we transitioned into the real estate market, that side of it, right when the market crashed. Like <laughs> we were in for like the recession. I think we all cringe a little bit when we hear the 2008 timeframe. <laughs> Um, and then uh, we turned into specializing in short sell agents during that time, came out of it full force. And literally, we had a vision of when we retire, it was going to be from selling houses in Ohio to selling houses in Florida. That was the vision. That's that we had to crack doors. That was going to be our retirement, sell houses till we die down in Florida. Um, and then we found EXP. You know, one thing we figured out about real estate, and we've been doing it 25 years now. So Stacy started when she was three, right? But uh, one thing we figured out about real estate <laughs> is that the old business model, um, real estate was a, uh, a great job, but it was not a really great business. Like a lot of our friends, you know, the dream was, right, work really hard as an agent and then go become a broker. Well, a lot of our friends were brokers. And what we figured out the word broker stands for for a lot of them is the word broke, right? That's in the <laughs> middle of it. They were broke and they were unhappy and they were babysitting, basically doing adult babysitting. And we were like, oh my gosh, becoming a broker uh, for us was not the way. We didn't want extra responsibility and still have to pour our money into it and take on all the liabilities. So we're like, well, now what do we do, right? So we built teams uh, with where we were at. Uh, we were taught the team model, right? Bring in a team, bring in people on worse splits. And that didn't work either because they didn't like that, right? The people that worked with us. Uh, once you bring them into the team and you're taking a cut of their pay, what do they want to do after they leave. learn everything? They want to leave. After, yeah. you them everything. after you taught them everything <laughs> you knew. And then sometimes they were a little salty even. They, they figured out that you were taking some of their money. So we're like, well, this team concept doesn't work either. What are we going to do? And then that's where we found a friend of ours from Chicago shows where we're at now. And we're like, this is the perfect blend of being independent and being able to work with a team model um, where we all work together as an organization. It was incredible. Yep. That's probably more than you were looking for, but that's what you, that's <laughs> that's what you got on that now. question. I'm looking for what, I'm, what I have right now. Don't worry. <laughs> Beautiful. So who, who hey. first heard of, of EXP and was the instigator of this, uh, of this change? A friend of mine from Chicago, we, we were just chatting on LinkedIn and he was getting into real estate and he said, hey, uh, will you take a look at this new business model? He goes, I know you've been doing it for 20 plus years and just tell me what you think of it. And I got to tell you, Tomas, once I uh, saw it, 
I couldn't unsee it. I'm like, oh my, my gosh, this is what we've been looking for. This is what we've been looking for. And I went to her. I was so excited, man. I couldn't now, now sleep. Let me and now get, here's what happened. Let me set this up. They had been having this conversation for months without telling me anything. And all of a sudden, Jim comes to me the day of and says, oh. She loved our old broker. Still does. I, yeah. He's like a brother. He comes to me the day of and says, oh, we have a lunch appointment with these guys that are flying in from Chicago and Nashville to talk to us about a new brokerage. That's when I, when I found out. Yeah. And I literally sat at this appointment like this the whole time. Like I, cause we were at a hundred percent, my broker let us do our own thing. Like it was the perfect arrangement. Um, a good, great job, but not a good business because we were going to be selling houses I until we died. was to say that I was probably the hardest recruit he ever had to sell as an understatement. Like I was so mad during this appointment the whole time, but after about two hours, like kind of just, you know, like he said, once you start listening, you can't unhear it. And literally I had a, a, what do they say? A, a coming to Jesus moment right then. Like, cause I knew as much as I love my broker, I love my family more. I, I could see this was the answer we had been looking for. It was perfect. Hey, and we can talk like friends on here. Let's just tell you the real truth. She smacked me like this, like a wife does and said, now we have to leave our broker. She's all angry, man. Like mad at me. Not, we wanted to leave yeah. our broker. We had to, because mm -hmm. once we saw the math, we like, this is it. This is how people like us. I mean, I'm in my mid fifties. Here's how in the next five years we can literally retire. And when we say retire, retire means we're going to sell real estate because we want to, not because we have to, right? We have so many friends that are at ages now where they're in their 60s, 70s, hustling against, you know, young 20 and 30 year olds, but they're doing it because they have to not because they want to, because of that old thing. The old real estate traditional model was a great job, but it was a really not great business. You know, exactly. the, Tomas, we think a litmus test of a business is this. If you can leave for a couple of weeks and go do this, right? And your business grows while you are gone, then you have a business. But if you leave and do this for two weeks and it costs you money because you lose business, then you got a job. That's what we think. Nice. That's a nice comparison there. <laughs> and and yeah, if you could if you could convince uh, Stacy Jim, it seems like she was a really hard one to get. Uh, I mean, you know, I think you can convince anyone that. <laughs> Tomas, I talked her into marrying me. She had all the warning signs to say no, <laughs> but I begged for four years, and she finally said yes. So you know what? Even a blind squirrel can get a nut every now and then. That's how I feel. <laughs> exactly. So, so like most most uh, power couples or uh, business partners do, you you told me that you complement each other's strengths. So just tell us how you manage uh, your 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 team. So it's very interesting because when we found EXP, we were already high producing agents, like the volume wise and something like that. It wasn't even something we were after, but we just did the stats the other day. We've been with EXP about three and a half years. Our production side, because we do, I, I focus on production, Jim focuses on attraction, has increased 62%. And that is by not, I didn't add any, I'm a single agent, actually, we call, we call our family our team, but in the concept of team, I'm a single agent, they're independent agents. Right. Um, but our, our production has increased 62% just implementing the systems that EXP has. The KB Core, the lead gen, all that stuff. I didn't even have that. It just came with everything. It was pretty amazing. And what we choose to do is with that production that's coming in, it's basically combining EXP's systems with our reputation, our 25 years of business. And when you plug those two in together, it's pretty massive, like the results. And so with our tribe, our family that we've recruited, we have 130, yeah. 141. Sorry, 141 <clears throat> agents right now. She hasn't been keeping track, but I yeah. do. <laughs> that that overflow that comes in like i'm very selective i take out mostly just repeat and referral clients so all that new stuff coming in we actually hand feed and work with and train and mentor the agents that we're bringing in underneath of us so it's a huge win-win like it, it i've always said you cannot you cannot train or mentor an agent out of a textbook so it works perfect you know we literally last night we were on with three or four of our different agents that had contract offer their very first contracts the very first offers their negotiations and we were helping them all last night from the caribbean yeah we believe in the saying you know you get give a man a fish 
you feed them for a day. But if you teach them how to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. And with our system, they're grateful enough that you teach them how to fish. It can pay us for a lifetime also, and not just that, but our kids and our kids' kids with the setup that we have at EXP. And I hope anybody watching that, this is, this is the key. Before we did the exact same thing, we poured our heart into our buyers yeah. agents that came in, we taught them everything, and we always wished them well, because as soon as they got good enough to be on their own, they left. They, they flew, flew the nest, nest right? And but our which made sense. Our financial connection, our financial tie was done, and for them, unfortunately, so was our mentorship, because we had decades of experience. We could have kept feeding them and giving them knowledge. Right. In this, in EXP's model, that's what's so amazing. Every one of these, our mentees, our 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 tribe that we brought in, they have us nonstop, twenty four seven years to come. Because the bigger we, the the bigger, the bigger they grow, the more successful they are the more successful we are. Yeah. And so our whole goal is to turn every agent, whether they're brand new, just going through classes into an icon. We have a three-year plan mapped out for anybody that's brand new. Like we're like, we, our goal is icon in three years. Yep. The that. financial alignment that uh, Glenn Sanford and the other geniuses created have made it so that agents are willing to help agents. Yeah. Where in the past, like the top agents in Columbus, They've yeah. never reached out to ever they help never us. Gave me their playbook. They never told us their playbook. They never wanted to help us get to the next level, right? They were actually all, all hoping we would go away or, uh, you know, fail. not make it or <laughs> fail, right? So, but this model, the top agents in the world are willing to pour into you and help you. And we love that. And we are doing the same thing with, uh, with our agents that have partnered up with us and, I, and helping other agents too. We teach in the world, mm -hmm. right? Right. I think it's important to note too that EXP has lifted our boundaries. Like literally our real estate business was not only Ohio, which is here, then it was Columbus, Ohio. And so our agents that we talked to that we, you know, mentored in the time that we mentored them were just in this little area. Now we are literally in three countries. Yep. Um, we have 17 states. Like we're in, we, we just got somebody join us in the Dominican Republic the other day. Nice. We are so excited, excited about, yeah, all the way from Ohio to the Dominican Republic. We love it because of our connections uh, in the company, it went from a firefighter in Boston to a real estate uh, agent slash investor down in the Space Coast, Florida, to a woman in Utah who's from the DR. <laughs> and she introduced us to her friends in the DR and there's a bunch of them that are coming on board. And so the way Beautiful. our financial model with DXP, we're connected with it and we Every love it. Every one of those agents are all helping the, and yeah. everyone's financially rewarded. It's an absolutely amazing concept. What an incredible way, right? Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> and um, so how about you, Jim? Like, what is your current strategy to expanding, uh, expanding the team and recruiting more agents? Of course, as you told me, it grows very organically. But apart from that, what is your efforts in doing so? One thing I've learned is uh, that's very important is not to rely on our put our retirement and our future in someone else's hands. So the organic growth is great, but our mission is this: we're going to drive it. And what we've learned is that um, with your downline or people that are watching you, there is more that is caught than what is taught. They're going to do what they see, not what you say. Right? It's just like with kids. Uh, right. <laughs> Your kids watch you. They uh, they hear what you're saying, but they watch what you do. And it's the same thing right in our group. So what we've learned is this. It takes time blocking and a systematic approach based on your results. So here's what we do, Tomas. We start with the end in mind. This year, our goal, uh, we have 33 frontline recruits right now. But this year, our goal is to recruit 25 more. OK, 25 more that will come in. So that's uh, one every other week. But we know to get to that number, we have to have a minimum of one meaningful conversation per day with an agent. And what I mean by meaningful conversation is we actually discuss real estate. We sit down to not, I'm not just saying, hey, did you see that game the other day? We actually talk real estate business. And if I can have one per day, five days a week for 50 weeks out of the year, that's 250 meaningful, 270 meaningful conversations. And 10% of those partner with us on EXP. That's how we're going to end up with 25. So we work it backwards. So for any of your people that are watching, if they wanted to have five new recruits this year, 
They need to have one meaningful conversation per week, a cup of coffee, you get a beer with them, you sit down with them and have lunch and you talk real estate business. You talk lead gen, you talk retirement. It doesn't just have to be about EXP, but what is their plan? What's their future look like? And when you get into those conversations, it always eventually comes around to broker. And I, and I think that's important to point out, watching Jim from the sideline, and even our mentors that help us above, they build rapport first. Build a if relationship. You just go in and start pitching oh, yeah. EXP and it's you terrible. haven't earned the right, which mm -hmm. means that cup of coffee and you may not even talk about exp you know what i mean you're building the rapport you're talking shop yep. you're talking real estate what did your 2021 look like where do you want to go in 2022 what do you love about your broker like it's you have to earn the right to do the pitch when the time is i right. may catch some heat for this but i'm going to say it anyways if that's all right you can cut it out if you don't like it but for <laughs> me i think the cold call cowboys that are just out there pounding the phones, calling people and don't have, oh, we're gonna hear some music here. So <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to the Virgin Islands, man. <laughs> <laughs> in the street here, but it's awesome. We love it. We love it here if you can't tell. Um, but they are not building relationships. And because they're doing it and they're just pounding a phone list, yeah, they're having success because it's just a numbers game, but it's, for the rest of us that are trying to build a relationship, we're talking to people we know and they're like, oh, I already know about EXP. Well, they got a what, a three to five minute phone call where a complete stranger dialed them up and, and you know, fed them some stuff. That's not it. And I think it hurts the rest of us who are trying to build relationships, make friends. Mm -hmm. And then if the business is right for them, it brings them on. Now, some people, then, the cold call cowboys that watch yeah. us are all gonna give a bunch of hate to that, but. <laughs> They're gonna call you, they're gonna call you. <laughs> they're like, hey man, don't say it anymore. I'm trying to keep my team to cold call. I think you build a relationship. Everybody is looking for validation in life. Every, that's why social media is so big. Everybody wants to be heard. And so I think you get further by asking questions, thought provoking questions. Hey, what, Tom, uh, Tomas, what's your plan for retirement? What are you going to do? What's it look like for you? And for most agents, if they're real and let their ego go, their plan is to sell houses until they die. And I can tell you that sounded great in my thirties and forties. It don't sound great in the fifties heading for 60. No, thank you. <laughs> right. And I, I think too, one step further is Jim is amazing at what he does. That's his background with the recruiting. So when we bring on these new agents, I help them with production, but we also show them the benefit of the rev share part of it. If we could only go back to be yeah. in our twenties to start rev share. Oh, oh my gosh. God. We'd have been done. We'd have been done 15 yet. years ago. Right? And Jim yeah. shows that they don't have to be the person. So if you're if you're thinking about starting RevShare and you're good at talking to agents, don't forget the newer agents or the agents you bring on that aren't because agents are not recruiters. Real right. estate agents are not normally recruiters or attractors. Our success in the beginning was because we took people we knew and we introduced them to the people who knew how to recruit, how right. to tell the story. We didn't tell it ourselves. And so I would tell anybody who's watching this, if they want to build a RevShare, go build a relationship. And then when it comes down to the presentation, look awesome. up your upline mm -hmm. and pass them off to somebody that knows how to do it, that can answer the questions properly, that can give a proper presentation. And so now that's what we're doing for our downline. Yeah. Like we have, you know, we don't want them to do recruiting because if they're not trained to do it, they're going to mess it up. We call it the triangle of trust because a lot of these agents know the agent they're putting us in front of. They have a relationship. Right. They've either been in the same office with them. They work with them. So that agent trusts our agent. But if our agent starts to try to pitch a business that they may just be getting into, right. don't have the background, don't have the sales. You know, if you sold 5 million and you're trying to pitch an agent that sold 20 million, it doesn't work. But right. they would probably, hey, would you do me a favor? Let's go grab a cup of coffee. I want to bring my mentor. And we call it triangle of trust. So they come in, they like them, and then they bring in the, you know, gym. The, edific the, the edification of it. And, um, you know, it takes it off you. It takes the pressure off your relationship if you're not the pitch person, if you have the friendship with the agent, yeah. keep your friendship, introduce them to an edified stranger, let them do the pitch. That way, if maybe they're not interested, your friendship, your relationship is still intact, right? Because it was the stranger that did the pitch. Yeah. That's what we think. So we have literally taken advantage of both sides of what EXP has to yeah. offer. And even traveling nowadays, my real estate's done here. I just negotiated and did two requests for remedies on houses that I put in the contract. <laughs> right. You know, as we were leaving, you can still, I mean, that's what EXP is built around. Like you can do production from anywhere. You can do traction, definitely. That's our whole goal when we're down here is to talk to agents down here too, because EXP will be in the Virgin Islands. You're no longer stuck in one little city, one little mm -hmm. spot in your own little state. 
you can build a global business now and that we love that idea that part being able to now that we're empty nesters being able to move around and uh do what we want but grow the business we have a true business we could disappear if we wanted for two weeks and have it grow so we still be alive and growing <laughs> right time is more i mean you you're young but when you get to be this age you're going to realize time is more important than money but you got to have the money to make the time really awesome, right? <laughs> to be able to do the super cool stuff. Uh, Cause time kind of sucks if you have no money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to remember that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, when, when it comes to, to helping people like you, uh, it seems like you, you want to, you want to help people, of course, grow their business and uh, get their life together. <laughs> But also uh, you told me that you're very into nonprofit, right? And you started, uh, Two nonprofits. Could you could you tell the audience about your projects? Yeah, we started two nonprofits. Yeah, one in 2011 and one in 2014 was the year we started. The, and one was we work with um, the homeless people in Columbus, Ohio, and their pets. Sounds kind of funny, but a lot of we partnered up with one of the uh, hospitals, the local hospitals that go out into the homeless camps and treat them. The people, the campers, we call them, but most of them are on the land because they have animals that they won't give up. And what we were finding is we were already in animal rescue. The animals were underfed, not fixed, a whole. So we partnered up with Mount Carmel Medical Outreach Team. We handle the animals, they handle, and then we drill water wells in Zimbabwe as our second one in Africa. Um, and then us personally, those were two that we, non, that we co founded, but we are a part of many. You know, sell a home, save a child that is actually connected with the EXP is our nice. new one that's really pushing that platform. It, every one of our sales that we do, whether it's a listing and or a buy, is usually associated with some sort of charity that we're giving back a big chunk of our commission. Um, Homes for Heroes is another one. We're really big for local hometown. I was heroes. in the military for 12 years, so that's a big uh, thing for me to uh, respect our local heroes and people that bring us freedoms and uh, give us this incredible life we have mm -hmm. in the United States of America. So we're big on that. Um, also, the Humane Society of the United States, we're very big in that uh, working on animal welfare legislation in the state of Ohio, helping to make uh, life better for We like to be the voice for the voiceless, if you will. We, we like the underdogs, man. That's how we are. Yeah. Nice. No, it, it works well. Like even uh, with the uh, pets of the homeless. Yeah, it sounds. I, I don't think I ever heard about uh, a, a charity um, focused on that. You know, and, and it, it is true. Like you walk around, like a lot of homeless people have pets. Like who's who's, right, who's taking care of them? Yeah, an animal has unconditional love. They don't care what you look like, what kind of clothes you're wearing, what kind of car you do or do not drive, right? They don't even care. A lot of animals don't even care what you smell like. They just care, do you love them? If you do, they love you back. And so these, these homeless people will literally sleep on the street because they can't go to the shelter. Because if they go to the shelter, the shelter won't take their animal. Their animal has to go night-night, basically. Mm -hmm. the way it has to go. So they'll, they'll sleep in a tent in the freezing cold in Ohio to keep their dog or their cat And uh, we found that if we fed the animals, the humans stopped giving what little food they had to their animal. So now you have a healthier animal and you get a healthier human. Pretty cool. Yeah, nice. And now guys, let, let's do a bit of a, a small exercise, but because usually we don't have um, a, a team, uh, a couple team here, uh, but we do. So I'm going to ask a question. And I want like Jim to answer for Stacy and Stacy to answer for Jim. Oh, okay. We all, it's funny you say that because we always tell people you get two realtors for the price of one with us. And we don't always agree. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's see how it goes. Like the question is a bit, uh, a bit re retrospective uh, Lee. Okay. So Got it. what areas do you feel? So that's, this question is for Jim. What areas do you feel Stacy needs to improve? And what is Stacy doing about it? So what does Stacy need to improve? That's a good one. You guys hit me first. You see that? I'm on a honeymoon vacation here. That's uh, gonna be crazy. I'm putting on the spot. I'm putting on the spot. Yeah. I love it. So here's something that Stacy's been working on and becoming much more amazing at it. And believe it or not, stuff like this. Public speaking, right, in front of crowds and groups because we've been getting on stage, right? She's gotten amazing at that and she's been working on it. And usually doing interviews like this would have had her uh, palms sweaty and nervous <laughs> to be. And you can see how cool relate and relaxed and things like this speaking out the cup. But yeah. she worked on that because when I first met her, she, you were 
You were terrified yeah. to speak in front of people without having, she would write her stuff out back then. Look at her, no notes, <laughs> no she's notes. freelancing. <laughs> and so I've been amazed at how she's overcome that fear and become amazing at it. So that's what I say, she's working on it. That's and it's a very true incredible. story. One of our first appearances on stage, I started to talk and literally drew a blank and tried to talk a couple more times and then just handed the mic and walked off the stage. Yep, handed it. <laughs> it happens, it happens. It can happen to anyone, it can happen to anyone. So Stacy, what do you have to say about him? What does he need to improve and what is he doing about it? He is, he's also doing a good job at this. Jim is a natural born leader. Like people flock to him and it's genuine. That's why they do. Like he could literally, what is the, where they burn the boats? What's that saying where they will follow him and burn the boats? And he wants to do everything for everybody on the stage, handling everything. And one of the things that we've had to learn with the XP is he has to develop leaders. It has to step back a little bit and teach them and show them and let them do it and maybe even make a little bit of their own mistakes and then let's help them. So hand, hand off, hand, hand off a little more. We all, we all our joke <laughs> of, of our family is it's not getting Jim to talk, it's getting him to stop talking. Sometimes we have to take it's the mic getting him to shut the hell up <laughs> and, <laughs> and let someone else talk, but he's doing really good at that and he's developing amazing amazing leaders we have our first set of icons starting to come through that are building their team and production and it's amazing guys so yeah how can our audience uh, reach you and uh, get some good vibes out of you you will you will see us small on stage a lot at the i the exp con shareholders event in the breakout rooms and then we're on every form of social media you can find us individually Stacey and Jim Lambright or the Lambright team. We have it on all the different social media. Yeah, or if you're, uh, I know the young people don't do Facebook, but we're on Facebook a lot. You can find us there at Instagram. We're still figuring out that Snapgram thing though. Our young kid taught us what that, <laughs> Snapchat, wait, Snapchat. That's what that is, Snapchat. I, I will tell you though, one thing Jim has been amazing about is when he works with our teams, a lot of times he does the YouTube type things. So yeah. his YouTube channel is public. So there's a lot of stuff that we hand out to our team that we work with on and stuff that you can access there. Oh yeah, people awesome. can jump in there and yeah. grab right off of that. I put it on YouTube, we got a YouTube channel and uh, but get in there and yeah. subscribe. I guess, what do you call it? Subscribe, click the bell to get notified, all that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay. Tomas, this is incredible what you're doing, yes. man. I love this Icons of Real Estate podcast. It's great. I'm going to, as soon as I get off here, I'm signing up for it and I'll be listening in <laughs> yes. because I think it's great what you're doing. You're super professional. I, I love this. It's this is part awesome. Part of the giving back community. Yeah, I think it's great yeah. what you're doing, man. It's incredible. And, and I love this. I love this scenario that you, that you brought in here with all your good energy, uh, Caribbean music, and, uh, and laughter. I, I, we haven't had an episode like that, so I can say this was quite unique, and I want to thank you guys for it, and I hope you you enjoyed the same as me. Okay, guys, thanks for coming in, and see you at the have a nice life. Yeah, see we'll, you. See, yeah. we'll see you in June, man, yes. down in uh, Orlando for the shareholders convention. Yes. See you. Thanks. Have a good one. Uh,